And I know, I know, I know. Ah, ha, 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 Floridians. You're wearing so many layers. It ain't that cold. Whatever. I can deal with the humidity. My heat went out. So we're gonna we're gonna harvest some bananas that are not happy about being out here. We're gonna check on a bunch of our vegetables and some of the other projects out front here. And then we're gonna be collecting firewood because as you can see there, well, I don't know if you can see there, but we'll look at it in a second, a giant branch fell down in our yard and like OMG. So some of that will become firewood. Some of it will be for future projects. Okay, let's go. I know a lot of you were worried about the newly planted raised beds and with the frost coming because the video came out, what, like just a day or two before the, like we started getting that really, like we've been getting cold weather, but like we got like in the thirties, which was crazy. Um, the good thing is, is that because my work situation is so crazy, some of these videos are getting filmed a couple weeks earlier just because I just, I'm working so much. I just don't have time. But I really appreciate everyone's concern. So actually all of these plants had like a couple weeks to establish before that freeze started coming through. So they're all doing really, really good. I mean, look at this. I mean, the onions, I mean, there's like out of 80 onions, I think one or two didn't do good. Here, come on down, let's look at it better. I mean, look, that's pretty good, right? They put on new greens, they're all like nice and perky. They're looking very happy overall. I only see like a handful and maybe they're just gonna be slow to start, but otherwise 90. 95% doing really good. So I feel like that's like a win. And then our cauliflower slash cabbage is doing good too. Um, still not 100% sure. I think one person said it's for sure cauliflower. You know, that's the, the thing for me in my head is I'm like, they're all part of the Braska family. They're all like have the whole, like if you go back in like the history of time, they're all kind of related to each other. So I don't know. I mean, if you're confident that's cauliflower, I, I'm not going to be mad about it. But they've all put on new growth. Um, overall, nobody looks unhappy. The leaf damage that you guys saw that in the original video, that was there at Lowe's. I have not seen any uh, cabbage worms, though you may know what the temperatures we're having. Oh, you got sticks for the fireplace. Great. Oh, thanks, kiddos. Just set it next to the door right now, okay? Okay, thank you. So some of y'all were talking about how you saw the cabbage worm damage over here. Now here's the thing, I have seen zero evidence of cabbage worms. And like, let's also call them what they are. Those are, you know, your cabbage butterflies, your great white southern butterfly caterpillars. So like, are we 100% mad at them? You know me, I love a butterfly garden, so I'm not totally mad. I don't really see any evidence of caterpillars anyways. And with the temperatures as low as they are, I mean, that's kind of why you want to be in that cold weather season. They're just going to be a little bit more dormant anyways. So they've been putting on the, the brassicas here, whether they're cauliflower or they are uh, cabbage, they're definitely putting on new growth. They look super healthy and happy. So if a couple leaves go to caterpillars, I won't be mad about it. But one of the things I noticed and I was thinking about is with there's some extra space in here, I might actually throw some carrot seeds in. I was talking to Ben and I was like, would we actually eat the carrots? Cause I'm not a big fan of carrots, but he actually want, likes eating fresh carrots. So that's exciting. So maybe for him, you know, he'll eat them. So I'm thinking I'll try to fill in like, maybe like this space right, right, right here or in the back. We'll just put like a few carrots in and you know, do a thing. And then the lettuce, <laughs> the, um, it, we didn't have germination issues here, <laughs> like clearly. Um, I don't know whether it was my seed packets or the seeds I collected, but everything is doing great. <laughs> so we've got tons and tons of lettuce yeah, that I'm gonna have to thin out. So that's cool. Um, and then, oh, you can see the garlics. 
are all starting to come up, which it looks like I might not have divided them correctly, which whoopsies on my part. And then the beets are already coming up here. So we got a lot of the little sprouty sprouts here. So I'll let everybody get a little bit bigger before I start thinning too much, especially with, uh, we're gonna continue to have a couple cold weeks. So I'll let them get like maybe this tall and then I'll start really cutting through. I mean, especially when I did this last year and I had similar situations. You know what, you take the little thin micro greeny type of and you, you make a little micro greeny salad, which is good for you and healthy, all, all sorts of good things. Now the people, the plants, not people, plants that are less happy right now, this is gonna be my tropicals. Um, bananas are not big fans of it. Now, a lot of you were asking me like, what are you doing about your bananas? Now, if your bananas are really well established, like you got year old bananas, um, and especially like I've got them pretty close together, these two plants, like they do create their own microclimate. One, two, they can take a slight freeze and not just like freak out. So you often don't need to like, it's all about how long they sustain it and then kind of how, where you've got them placed. But one of the challenges I'm having with the freeze happening and it going cold and warm is this bunch of bananas being almost ready to go is not like, you know, I'm getting splits and tears and I just gonna, gonna take this whole thing inside because otherwise I'm gonna lose it. And yeah, not good, not good. But otherwise the bananas that are, have been here and aren't gonna be ready for like a couple months, these are totally fine. They're cold, but they're fine. <laughs> and overall the plants have been generally good. This is why when we talk about where you place your bananas, you want to put them in a place because Florida does get freezes for a couple days. They don't like being frozen for long, but you know, put them in a place that they're going to be generally happy. The ones on the side of the house, they, they're fine. They don't care. Um, the house radiate. That's one of the things if you live in Florida, if you've got a cement house, it radiates heat. So it keeps it a little bit warmer back here. I mean, like, remember I took out those pups on the dwarf Cavendish. Look, they're already bouncing back, even though it's really cold out. And then over here, you can see these bananas. You'll see some leaf damage like this. You know, they don't look, but it'll be fine. All this will be fine in the long run. Mulberries, they're totally fine. Other ones that are less thrilled, but will be okay. Like your Calmondans, they're fine. Um, in orange groves in Florida, if it's gonna get really cold, they will put on sprinkler systems and water their orange trees getting it so that if it gets too cold too long it puts a frost on it so that it maintains that 32 degrees but so we're getting some orange drop but not much um, also our oranges are almost ready so but my poor I did get the fertilizer I haven't put it down yet on this caramel but this caramel is so sad right now the mulberry over here totally fine no issues there I wouldn't even do anything with that one and then of course the Kalamond is back here. Again, we're in a more sheltered area, so it probably didn't get quite as cold here as just the general temperature, um, but both of them are fine. And then this one's already got a little couple, it's got some blossoms on it. And then there's some little buds of future Kalamond. Okay. Um, so overall, most of the plant, the vegetable edible plants have been fine. And the natives, other than natives that maybe you just put in, like I just put in a wildflower garden, most of those, if they're established, while they might look sad for a minute, they'll be fine. They're designed to take some cold <laughs> for a little bit and be okay. So the shade garden that I planted late last year, everybody's fine. Nobody's mad, no one's sad. They all look, they look happy. I do have some wild coffee on the other side of the house that, <laughs> It is clearly not happy about the fact that it got cold, but it's been there for over a year. It'll be fine. But look at this. Even like these guys are getting nice and big. They're fine. Everybody's fine. We're all fine. We can survive the cold for a minute, but we need our heat and humidity to come back. Like real soon. We're all real soon. just got home from the garden center. I was about to finish filling the garden beds and then plant them with some vegetables.
right there. Fell down. Man, oh man, oh man, were my neighbor and I really lucky because that branch hangs over his pickup truck. <laughs> it didn't hit our monarch butterfly garden. It didn't hit any of our banana plants right here. It missed the trellises and literally just missed the raised bed. It landed in the one open spot on this side of the yard right here. It was crazy. like a nice border here all this the green will end up drying out but it'll slow down the erosion and then whenever I go to put mulch down again throughout the year we just have something just creating a barrier to slow down the slope very exciting these I'll leave some of these out for the neighbors they can have some plumeria I already have a big one and I took some of the cuttings and I put them over there where the papaya used to be so we'll see what happens Whew. I know, I know. I had told you guys that this week was going to be the wildflower garden week, but well, it's going to be next week because, you know, I had to talk about the freeze and the shenanigans. So, okay, if you want to make sure you don't miss it, go ahead and like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. New videos each week. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.